Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Everybody say hi to the people. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm mostly going to talk to you guys, but this is on, so I'm just going to kind of pretend it's not there. Um, we are going to talk all about stress. Raise your hand if you have no stress. Like I thought. <laughs> if you're living in the year 2018, I think you've got stress. Sometimes even good things cause us stress, right? Mm -hmm. So how many of you look forward to the holidays, but at the same time you know, okay, you know, this is going to be stressful. Even though it's good, and even though I'm seeing all these people that I love or whatever, you know, sometimes relatives. Good stress, bad stress, I know. But even good things can cause us stress. So I would like for y'all to tell me some of the things you think cause the most stress in people's lives. What are things that you think cause the most stress? <coughs> Just shout it out. I'm going to live up to yeah. what you think are expectations. Expectations, that's a huge yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Fine. Finances, that's yeah. a big one. Too busy. Too busy. Our schedules, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. definitely. What else? Relationships. Relationships, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. I was looking at several studies online and these are the top seven causes of stress in our lives today. Job, pressure, pressure at work. Does anybody have pressure at work? Number two, money, which has already been named. Anybody have stress about money? Especially this time of year. Number three, your health. Do any of you have stress related to your health? Number four, relationships. Who said that? Somebody already said that. Number five, poor nutrition. That's interesting. Number six, media overload. Yes, definitely. And number seven, sleep deprivation. Anybody? <laughs> Me last night. Posting at three in the morning. On Facebook at three in the morning. Um, yeah. So those are the top seven causes of stress. The World Health Organization said that stress has become a worldwide epidemic. So, you know we have stress. Here's a few statistics for you. 77% of people who regularly experience physical symptoms caused by stress. Are you aware of how closely related your stress impacts your physical health, your emotional health, your spiritual health? So 77% acknowledge that. Yes, stress impacts me physically. 73%, this was a study done with at several thousand people. 73% um, regu regularly experience psychological symptoms caused by stress. 33% feel they are living with extreme stress. 48% feel that their stress has increased over the last five years. How many of you would say your stress has increased even over the last 12 months? Yeah, most of us. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 70, 76% cited money and work as their leading cause of stress. 48% reported lying awake at night due to stress. How many of you have trouble sleeping when you're stressed out? Do any of you? Yeah, I do. I just can't turn my brain off. Yes, and then you can't go back to sleep. Yes, that is me, exactly. Yes. Get all the peace and calming and frankincense. And I use Emipro. It's a supplement that we have for sleep. 48% said that stress has a negative impact on their personal and professional life. 31% of the adults that were employed say they have a difficulty managing work and family responsibilities. Um, let's see, 54% said stress caused them to fight with the people closest to them. So it's not only impacting your physical health, your emotional health, it's impacting the people around you and your relationships. 30% said they are always under stress <coughs> at work. So those statistics to me are very alarming. And what it tells me is even if we can't find a way to, like if you have a job, it's not like you can just quit your job to get rid of the stress. If you've got stressful relationships in your life, it's not like you can just say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to be around you for the rest of my life. No, we have to find positive and healthy ways to manage our stress because the stress isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it's here to stay 
unfortunately, and like I said, there's good things even can cause stress. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, Jeannie is, most of y'all know Jeannie already, she's a nurse, and she is going to share some of the, um, like the physical and medical impacts of stress on our bodies, chronic stress especially. And then I'm going to come back and we are going to be sharing with you at least six, I think I have at least six ways, natural healthy ways to help us manage our stress. So, alrighty. Miss Jeannie. All right, so like she was saying, stress it happens. We all going to have stress. So your body has a normal stress response that we is built in. It was the way our bodies were created so that we could deal with stress. So normal stress kicks in the fight or flight response. Some of the symptoms, when you all feel stressed, maybe your heart starts to race a little bit like mine does because public speaking still scares me. <laughs> um, your blood pressure might go up a little bit. Um, your body starts to release some cortisol and that is supposed to be the hormone that helps you deal with stress and it helps um, maintain things. Your liver releases glucose because your body, if it's going into that stress response, you need a little bit more sugar to whatever is happening so you can deal. Think about in the, um, we always talk about, you know, being, when we talk about this in medical terms and teaching people about it is like, if you're gonna be chased by a bear, your body needs to kick in and start doing things. So that you can run fast, so that you can maintain things. But the problem is, is if you have normal stress and it's you know here for a little bit, maybe a day or two, maybe a few hours, and then you're back and that shuts that system down, then you're fine. But what happens nowadays is that they say that if you are in chronic stress, if you have stress day after day after day after day, it does some things to your body because it's doing that like you're being chased by a bear or a lion for three months in a row or every day for three months, you're not going to be able to maintain that. And so there's some things that happens to your body. The first thing that happens or that could happen is weight gain. The reason that happens is your, your cortisol levels are increased that whole time. It's releasing all that. Your blood pressure is increased that whole time. You have that adrenaline rush that has, keeps, having, keeps having to kick in and kick in and kick in. And then um, that depletes your insulin because, remember we said the liver has to re release that glucose. So if you're in chronic stress, all that extra insulin that your body has to be producing so that you can maintain and keep going and keep getting up and walking and doing whatever you have to function that day, it becomes exhausted. And so then your body starts having issues with not having enough insulin. And what, if you don't have enough insulin, you know what that leads to? Mary, you can tell us. <laughs> diabetes. Yes. So yeah. where do we have a huge increase right now in our country? I mean, it's mm -hmm. like that statistic keeps rising, rising, rising. And some of that is because of chronic stress. You know, mm -hmm. so there's other factors that go into that. Um, another thing that happens to your body, too, is that um, you can't, when you're in a high-stress situation, your body basically shut, starts shutting everything else down to focus on whatever that stress situation is. So you stop repairing cells, you start stop re reproducing the cells at the same rate that you were before because everything gets focused in on what that stress is causing um, or where that stress is that's causing the issues. So at that point, you don't even get the right amount of oxygen to your cells that it needs to. So everything you think about, you know, everything, like if you, if you have something that hurts, you know, everything, you think, all you can think about is that one thing that's hurting if it's your knee or whatever. And so when you're in a stressful situation, all your body can do is think about that stress. And so it's focusing on that. Another thing that I actually didn't even know until recently, but looking back on a situation or a previous job that I had that I had a lot of stress every day, um, I could see where some of this kicked in. It says it actually causes your brain to shrink. So if you have chronic stress, your high levels of cortisol um, for long periods of time actually cause your prefrontal cortex to shrink. And that part of the brain is the part that helps with concentration and decision making and judgment and social interactions. Some of the statistics um, that we talked about before when we were looking up some things is all the work related injuries. They say because of increased stress, well guess what, you're not thinking clearly, you're not making good decisions. I remember thinking too when I was in the stressful situation <coughs> before with my job, like I would react to stuff in a, in a weird way. Like I would, I'm like, where did that come from? 
and it was because I was in chronic stress. There was a lot of things that were leading to that. Um, so even that brain changes can lead to also some other mental health issues like depression and even Alzheimer's. That's another thing that we see a huge increase um, nowadays with people with um, having depression and both um, early onset Alzheimer's. So that's another real big concern. The other thing that can happen to your body is that adrenal fatigue. So basically those adrenal glands have to constantly be releasing that cortisol and it's just a big stress on the body, the stress causes more stress, and um, it says that 95% of adrenal fatigue comes from extreme emotional stress. So there's other things that could play into that, but that is the main cause of it. Um, it just puts everything out of balance. You know, God created us to be balanced in how our body works, and He knows that we were going to have stressful situations. That's why He created so that we would have a stress response and that we would have cortisol that would deal, help deal with that. But when we're in chronic stress, it can cause a lot of um, other problems. And having that huge amount of cortisol in our body actually, and then um, causes that adrenal fatigue, eventually your body can't produce enough cortisol. And what happens is it bowels progesterone so you don't have enough cortisol. You know what progesterone does for us females? <laughs> if you've heard Dr. Heady talk about it, it's a long list. Um, so anytime you have a hormone that's in balance, um, it can lead back to a lot of times to stress. I, didn't, I, I did not know all these connections. I have had problems with my progesterone level for years. But I've said this, even when I went to the doctor to get my levels checked and like that, I said, I know when it happens because I can always go back and pinpoint when I've had a really stressful family situation or a work situation, whatever it is, I can always pinpoint that that is when my progesterone levels started getting out of whack. And sometimes it would actually completely deplete it because I was still doing that. So just in general, fertility issues, hormone issues can be related to stress. Um, some of those symptoms is just having irregular periods, having increased PMS symptoms, estrogen dominance. If you know what that is, it's basically because your body doesn't have enough progesterone or you're, in, you're basically being constantly bombarded with those fake estrogens in our, in our beauty products and everything else that we're exposed to, it just once again depletes that whole process that should be balanced and it's not there. And then another thing that can happen is also with the hypothyroid. And some of those symptoms is the constipation, the hair loss, a difficulty sleeping, and increased weight. So those are all symptoms of that. But the good thing is, in a minute, we're going to talk about some things that we can do to help decrease our stress and also some supplements that we can use. And um, we'll be sharing some of that. So I'll let Candace share your next part there. All right. So we're going to split these up. And I'm going to talk about three... I think this is how we divide it up. I'm trying to remember. It's been a, it's been a few days since we've been playing this class. Um, I'm going to talk about three of the ways to manage stress in a healthy way, and then Jeannie's going to talk about three more. So the first one that I want to mention is um, I am a believer. So scripture and prayer is a great way to um, help relieve your stress and your anxiety, and there are even scriptures that tell us this, but so often we neglect this, um, and I think it's huge, and it's been huge for me personally. So there are several ways, if you look at the paper that I put um, on your table, I have listed some verses there that, um, and this is how I use scripture, um, but you know, you may find other ways to use these verses too. But um, I would find the verse in the Bible. I would actually write it out. I would pray through it, pray about it, actually read the words to the verse out loud. There is something very powerful that happens to our brains when we write, when we physically write. Think about the things you write down. You write down the things you want to remember. You write down your grocery list. You write down a thank you note to someone. You write down things that are important. And that does something physically to your brain. So writing down the verses is a very powerful discipline. Um, one, it is helping us to focus on truth. Two, it is distracting our minds from what may have been that negative train running through your head. So it's helping you to focus in on truth and it's helping you to not focus on 
the whatever the negative is. So that's one way that I would use those verses. I would also um, encourage you to memorize them. So when you are stressed out and you can't just go sit and write your verses, you've got those in your mind and you can recall them. And in that moment, just speaking that truth out loud is going to be speaking life over yourself instead of speaking death and I'm so stressed and I can't believe this happened and this is the end of the world. No, speak truth. For I know the plans I have for you. God has a plan. And when you focus on the scripture and the truth, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is near to the brokenhearted. And one of my favorite verses that I think is on that list. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> um, one of my favorite verses that um, really shows the power of prayer is from Philippians 4, 6, and 7 that says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God, and the peace of God that passes all you know, understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So prayer plus thanksgiving, and what does that next phrase say? You're going to have peace. So his word tells us where to find peace, but we neglect it. We sit there and we just dwell on the negative stuff or we complain to everybody and their brother instead of choosing prayer and gratitude. Those are huge, huge for our minds and our hearts and just focusing, helping us not to focus. That was my tendency. It has been my tendency in the past to focus on the negative. So we have to retrain our brains, right? It's like that little two or three year old that's getting into something you don't want them to play with. What are you gonna do? You're gonna pull them and, oh, let's come do this instead. You're distracting them. You gotta do that with your own brain. Don't keep thinking about it. Oh, let's think about this instead. Let's read a verse. Let's count our blessings. Let's write down what we're thankful for. Let's speak the words to a verse out loud. All of those are helping to distract and refocus our minds. So I love that Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It tells us right there that prayer and gratitude will help us have that peace, that God fills us with that peace as we pray. Uh, another thing that I love is where um, in Psalm 8, it talks about how praise silences the enemy. Well, in moments of stress or anxiety, um, it may be that the enemy is feeding us lies. And that is what we are listening to the lies. We're believing the lies. Um, and so when we praise, when we turn our attention to him and we speak words of praise or just turn praise music on, turn it up, have a dance party in your kitchen, get the music going, get the praise going. And that is going to silence the voice of the enemy. So when we focus on him, that's helping us not to focus on the stressful situation. And he is in turn filling us with peace. Um, Proverbs 12, 25 says that anxiety weighs us down, but kind words lift us up. So there again, are you speaking words of life over yourself or are you speaking words of death? What are the thoughts in your mind and what are the words coming out of your mouth? Um, the words you speak to yourself and about yourself impact your physical health, your mental health, your stress levels, all of that. Um, our thoughts are very, very powerful. So prayer and scripture are huge for me. Um, and I would even add in there with Philippians 4, 6, and 7 that gratitude. Um, when you focus on your blessings instead of focusing on the negative, that also, gratitude also has the power to change our mindset. So that was number the first way, first healthy way. The second healthy way to manage our stress is exercise. Now, how many of you already knew that? But how many of you neglect it? <laughs> so on my own personal wellness journey, exercise has been huge. I can tell when I go even just a week or two without it. Um, there have been studies done that show that um, cardio and even strength training can be more powerful than antidepressants. That, that is huge, y'all. I mean, I spent all those years on meds. A lot of, I think probably most of you maybe know my story, but um, I spent all those years on meds. Of course, I was not exercising. I was not eating right. I was very unmotivated. Um, and I'm not saying I always want to go exercise. 
Y'all, I'm not saying that. But I have seen the powerful transformation, and I have seen how you can man. It just is great stress management. Um, so strength training especially, I have been reading more and more about that. Even if you're just doing hand weights, um, is very, very powerful for stress management. And then the third way, of course, that we're going to talk about is essential oils are so good for our um, stress management. This is um, an easy way to um, just have a few minutes to calm down. And the, your sense of smell, when you, take, when you smell a bottle of essential oil or a drop of essential oil, um, it travels within 22 seconds to your brain and it goes to the part of your brain called the limbic system that has also been known as the emotional brain. And that's where your emotions are stored, your memories, your hormones. And so it makes a huge impact on your emotional well-being just to smell an oil. Okay, I've got oils in front of you. I want everybody to open a bottle and take a deep breath. <laughs> Just smelling the oils is huge. Um, so on the paper that I gave you, and you guys that are on here, if you'll remind me, I will um, upload these documents into our groups. Um, I've got some favorite oils listed on the bottom of that page for stress. Um, if you've ever attended any of my classes, I have told you how I use oils for emotions and for stress. Those are some of the same ways. I have my diffusers going all the time. There's usually six main ways that I talk about. I have my diffusers going all the time because again, that sense of smell, and I almost always have citrus in my diffusers because citrus is a great mood boosting scent. Orange, tangerine, grapefruit, lemongrass, citrus fresh from your starter kit. Um, so diffuse all the time. Um, I, with frankincense, I will put a drop on my thumb and press it to the roof of my mouth as needed in moments of stress and anxiety and overwhelmedness. And I will often do that. You know, I don't do it all through the day, but if I'm feeling it, I do it. So there may be times where I'm doing it, you know, several times in an hour or two, and then I may go like a whole day with it. It's just based on how I'm feeling and if I feel like I need an extra boost or just some help calming down. Um, I also put oils in a capsule to take like a daily, almost like a vitamin. And I, in particular, like frankincense, uh, copaiba, and lemon. I add the lemon because lemon is very detoxifying. And as you know, all the toxins that build up in our bodies can cause our bodies stress, which impact us emotionally and physically. So I like to use those three, but there's a lot of combinations of oils you could use in a capsule. Um, I also rub them on. I um, use roller bottles. And then one of my new favorite ways, um, I'm gonna show you with stress away. I, I mean, I've done this a lot before, but I've recently been reading how um, impactful it is to just take a deep breath. So I'll just put a drop in the palms of my hands and take five to 10 deep breaths. And that does several things for you. First, it's helping you to stop. And, you know, if you were thinking about something, if you were running crazy, if you were out, you know, whatever. It just helps you to stop and sit still and take some deep breaths. But deep, taking deep breaths is also really good for you physically. It's cleansing out your lungs. It's helping detoxify your body. It's helping to actually, it's helping you to calm down. So just taking deep breaths paired with an essential oil is a really powerful way to just help yourself calm down. So um, those are some simple ways that I use oils. And then um, some of my favorites, we all have favorites, and I would encourage you to find your favorites and use those all the time. Um, if you don't love the smell of Valor, don't feel like, oh, well, she said Valor's her favorite, so I should be using that. There are so many good ones. Find what you love the smell of and use that one. You know, Stress Away is a favorite of a lot of people, but I actually like Valor better than Stress Away. So I pick up Valor first. But if you like Stress Away, then use your Stress Away. Um, because if you love the smell of it, you're gonna wanna keep smelling it, right? So um, some of my favorites are anything citrus, orange, bergamot, um, tangerine. I do love Valor. 
Um, lavender is very calming for many people. Um, sometimes it'll put people to sleep, but for some people, it's just calming in the moment, like if you're really feeling stressed. Um, so you find your favorites and smell them and use them often. All right, next. <laughs> As far as how many drops to take in well, the capsule? Yeah, like how many capsules do you do? Oh. Like, you put two drops in each, you know, like three. Yeah, they, I mean, they say everybody's different, so mm -hmm. usually the time that that effect of that oil has in mm -hmm. your body is anywhere from two to six hours. Okay. So it, it would just would depend on how, you could probably tell, like if you were taking something for anxiety mm -hmm. or something else like that, that you could probably tell, okay, I probably need, you know, mm -hmm. to to get okay. another one. But you're only doing a couple drops at mm -hmm. a time, so. I usually yeah. do one or two a day. Do you one or two, okay. Yeah. And you don't mix it with like oil? You can. You mix it with an uh, oil? You can put it with a carrier okay. oil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't oh, you're good. You're good. I'm glad you asked questions. Yes. That's good. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is sleep. So stress already kind of messes our sleep cycle anyways, but we need sleep because that helps us be less stressed. So I have gotten into that before, that cycle of like I'm stressed and then I don't sleep and then I'm more stressed and then I don't sleep. And so we need really those six to eight hours of sleep a night. I know a lot of us don't keep that consistently, but mm -hmm. um, we really need to try to get that so that we can restore our normal rhythm. Um, there's a lot of things that happen, of course, when we're sleeping, and when we don't get enough sleep, it kind of, you know, you're already having issues with other things when you're feeling really stressed, and now at the top of that, off without enough sleep, you're going to have even more um, complications there. So we've already mentioned a few things as far as um, some of the calming oils or things that help you stress or relieve stress. Some of my favorite oils to help sleep is lavender and cedarwood, um, Stress Away in Valor, Peace and Calming, and Frankincense. So really the ones that help you with the stress also will help you sleep. Um, probably my favorite places to put it is on the bottom of my big toe or put it on the back of my neck. Um, we're going to talk about baths in a minute too, and that's a great way to do to help your body calm down and be able to get into that sleep cycle. And then there's also some um, supplements you can take. Sleep Essence is one of them. And what did you say you took? I used Emupro. Emupro. Emupro has melatonin in it, and so that is a real good one that a lot of people will use to help sleep at night too. So those are some things to help you especially calm down. Uh, mentioned peace and calming when you're laying there and you can't go to sleep. Put a couple drops of that if your brain is still trying, going too fast, calm, or if you wake up in the middle of the night like I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So um, the next thing we talk about is diet. So we just talked about how that whole stress cycle happens, and we're already our insulin's depleted. And what do you all like to eat when you're stressed? What is you? What is it Chocolate. that we go to? <laughs> Chocolate. Mm -hmm. So sugar mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. carbs. And guess what? That just continues to put us in that stressed out, adrenal fatigue, all those kind of things that keep leading into. So think about trying to eat whole foods, things you know that um, are very good for your body. Also trying to think about um, getting the good fats, things like coconut and avocado oil because that's good for your brain, it's good for your body. And uh, one of the ways you can get it is with Omega Dyes. That is a Young Living supplement that has the good Omega oils in it. We just learned when we went to a conference in Boone that, um, mm -hmm. what was her name? The pharmacist, mm -hmm. Dr. Lindsay Elmore, she was talking about the sourcing of the Omega oils for Young Living. Is like she said, she has you know studied them all and she said that they you couldn't get any better from where they get their sourcing. They're not allowed to actually say um, where it is from because of how that works with all the companies and stuff like that. But she said that she's because she has worked directly for Young Living and has that insight into what doing it. So that's a great one that you can take um, every day to get your omega oils in. I just also like putting coconut oil in my coffee. If y'all have heard of mm -hmm. Bulletproof Coffee, we do a tablespoon. It's actually, they say use grass-fed butter, but I actually alternate between, most of the time, coconut oil or an MCT oil. We do that. 
Another thing to help with our diet, because we don't get everything that we need, is our Ningxia Red. Who's using Ningxia Red? Yay! <laughs> and if y'all don't know about the challenge next month, there's Dr. Ega's doing that. Um, is it the whole month or just three weeks? Just I think 21 it's 21 days. 21 days. I think yeah. it's up till like Chris, around Christmas time. But um, the ch in that challenge, she's going to tell you, you know, like write down everything that you are feeling bad right now with. And then see where you're at in 21 days by taking that Ningxia Red. Ningxia Red is like this super fruit, if you don't know about it. Um, it is very anti-inflammatory, very high antioxidant. And it just really, really helps in all your body systems. But I can tell a difference in how I even deal with stress between taking Ningxia Red every day and using Progestins Plus, which I'll talk about in a second. So, um, so that's a good one. And then just think about gut health in general because 80% of our serotonin is produced in our gut. And I think sometimes we get stressed out because our gut's not healthy too. And so think about also what are we eating, but also having good, um, the good probiotics, like Life 9 that Young Living has. Those are really good probiotics. They even have that kids one now that my kids really like too, the Mighty Pro, which is a powder form, but sometimes I'll sneak those too because They're it's really good. good. <laughs> yes. I am too. Yes. So if I, I take, I try to take the Life 9 last thing before I go to bed at night. The best, best time is when you don't have um, other food. It helps really absorb and get into your system and, and, and reset your, um, your good bacteria in your gut. And then also digestive enzymes. They have several different ones. I take the Allerzyme and I have noticed a lot of help with my digestive um, issues that I've had in the past with taking a digestive enzyme. You know, we used to get a lot of our digestive enzymes in our food and stuff like that and even our body was producing what it was supposed to, but because of things that we have been using over the years, like antibiotics and other things that our foods don't have the same digestive enzymes in them more. So taking a supplement like that and trying to find things that are um, like the kefir, anybody ever tried that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or the, for any fermented food is really a good for that, for the, to restore those digestive enzymes. So we'll talk about sleep and diet. And then we're just going to talk about a few other supplements. Just we talked about all that process that's happened in our body when we're stressed out. Um, they actually have a supplement. I don't have it. I've heard um, different doctors talk about it. Dr. Um, Jim Bob Hagerton, he is a doctor, a chiropractic doctor out of Texas. He talks a whole video about Portistop. So if you go to YouTube, you can find a whole video about that. Um, they do recommend that you have your cortisol levels checked before you start taking that because sometimes when you are having um, that adrenal fatigue, you're still in that process where your cortisol is really, really high. But if you're really depleted, you might be at that point where your cortisol actually is depleted, so you wouldn't necessarily want to take the cortisol. Mm -hmm. um, Endoflex is an oil blend that's really good to help with the adrenal fatigue. And uh, one thing with the cortisol levels, they do recommend that you do the saliva testing and not just the blood test. That's more accurate as far as where your levels are at. Then um, another supplement that is recommended is vitamin C. The Super C that Young Living has is really, really good. Um, one thing I didn't even know until I was studying this, I told Candace, I was like, vitamin C helps take out all that extra cortisol level out of your body. So if you have too much cortisol, vitamin C can help restore normal balance. So it's a big thing to be taking. Not only is it good for when you're trying to fight something off, but it also helps clear out with that. And it actually can help decrease your blood pressure. If you're having blood pressure issues because of stress-related things, having a good amount of vitamin C can help with that also. The other one is Super B. And Super B, I, I read something about it, and I guess it's been probably a little over a year now, and I've heard other people talk about it. And I stopped taking it for a few weeks, and I thought, oh my goodness, that really was really, really helpful in my energy level and just in general health, how I was feeling, and even my mental um, stamina. And one of the things that this, um, the B vitamins does is it helps your neural transmitters, your dopamine and your serotonin. <coughs> so if you are having all those stress issues and you're depleted, uh, your vitamin B needs to be restored. So that or that's a great supplement to take to do that. And then hormones. 
we all got to talk about hormones for a little bit. I mean, <laughs> cortisol is a hormone, but our female hormones, um, so many of us have that hormone imbalance because of possibly because of our stress levels like I have, or it could be something else that's going on in your body. Maybe you have that estrogen dominance. I didn't even bring my progestins class with me tonight. I usually have it, but um, that one, if you don't know about it, there is a whole article, um, Dr. Purser. If you Google that, um, he has a whole, like, I think it's like 14 pages of answering questions about how you use progestins plus, who needs to use it, everybody is how we say, um, especially if you're over the age of 30, 35, um, but it just is a natural progesterone that doesn't have the side effects if you were trying to take something um, that was synthetic. Clary Sage is another one that helps support your, um, that is more to supporting your I want to say dopamine, why am I saying that? Estrogen, <laughs> estrogen levels, and then once again, Endoflex, a lot of people are using those. One way to use Endoflex if you are, is you can put it on your neck is a good place, but actually, if you're having adrenal issues, putting it above your kidneys, that's where your adrenal glands are. So I rub a drop on each side of my um, adrenals, my back there, every morning. And so it's a great time to take it then. And then another one is Super Cal Plus. That one has calcium and magnesium and vitamin K and vitamin D. And we're gonna talk about magnesium in just a minute and how good it is for you to do that one. So you need um, you need high levels and or normal levels of magnesium in your body because of so many things that it functions. I wrote down eight things that it does. Magnesium it helps uh, balance your sugar. It's good for circulation and blood pressure. It helps um, cellular, cellular energy production. It calms the nervous system. It had, gives helps with pain relief and muscle, help relax muscles. Um, it can help with your bone density and your calcium balance, joints and ligament flexibility, and deep sleep patterns. So, a whole bunch of things that that magnesium, and they say if you start reading about it on like the WebMD and some of those other sites, they talk about how many people have a depletion of magnesium and chronic migraines and those kind of things too can be. So one great way to get your magnesium, and I love this that I just, I didn't know that I love taking Epsom salt baths. Me Anybody too. else? You do, yes, you're talking about that. Right? <laughs> I know, and I, for me, even if I start feeling like really worn down or if I'm just having like, starting to feel like I may be falling below that wellness line. If I do an Epsom salt bath with some oils in it, um, I've done a whole rotation of different oils. There's some out there that um, that are really good, like lemon and um, oregano, but I, I warn you, those are hot oil, that's <laughs> in hot oil, so you wanna make sure that it's real blended and a time to absorb into the Epsom salt before you get into the bathtub. Um, I should have it down what the other ones were, but there's several of them that can help boost your immunity too, so it's a really great way to do it. So when you do the magnesium sulfate, it detox and it strengthens the wall of your digestive tract. Um, it can help release those toxins. That actually, there's a whole article in the medical news today that I thought was really interesting that we found some of this. And then um, magnesium also helps again with those neural transmitters that we have to do to get a right amount of sleep and reduce the stress. It helps, um, and it helps produce melatonin. I didn't know that. So here again, it will help you with your sleep and your stress level on that. And it can regulate mood and stress um, by nourishing the nervous system. So what we're gonna do here in a minute is make our Epsom salt bath and make some roller balls too. But you, there's a, several different oils you can pick from and what you wanna do. Um, and that, my biggest word of caution is make sure if you're gonna use essential oils in the bath, is that you put it in the Epsom salt let it soak for a few minutes so that it absorbs because what does oil and water do? It just separates. So if you put it directly in there, I learned the hard way <laughs> before I knew what I was doing. <laughs> it it would, once you get in the bath, it will be floating on there and if you're using the hot oil, it can make your skin sensitive. So yeah, yeah. do that. All right, so you ain't got something else yet? Yeah. No, well, okay. I'm just gonna Fun. share real quick what we're gonna do with, and then I'll turn this off. Um, we're gonna make some roller bottles that you can use just whenever you're feeling stressed. Um, and then the bath salts, and she brought a lot of different oils. For the stress roller, I brought three oils, and I'm just gonna let you guys make whatever, like if you wanna just pick two of them. I really like lavender and orange together. 
I also like bergamot a lot, and bergamot I really like with anything. So you could blend all three of these, or you could just pick two of them, whichever two you wanna do. So we're gonna make roller bottles. Um, I think about five drops of each, four to five drops of each oil, and then we'll fill with carrier oil about halfway, because I think that's all I have left. Uh, I didn't realize I was almost out of carrier oil. Um, and then Jeannie will show you about the, the Epsom salt. So, all right, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys because you don't wanna listen to us make roller bottles, and we'll see you later.